Okay, so we're gonna finish up the main shaft here. Um, right now, I am assembling the main shaft um, in the way it's described in the service manual uh, to take some clearance measurements. So, pretty much just put everything together um, except for fourth gear and a couple of thrust washers and needle bearings. And uh, use the. This is where. This is why we needed to take out the main case bearing. Uh, I mean the main shaft bearing in the case because we need to assemble it on the shaft like I just did um, to take clearance measurements. So it says to torque it down to a specific torque but I had a hard time holding it still so I eventually just zipped down with my impact and I'm taking a measure I took a measurement between the two gears and saw if it was within spec. So now I'm just taking it apart. Um, you take it apart down till um, the clutch hub. Uh, oh, in this case, I just took it all apart because I forgot I need to replace the O-rings on the bottom. So uh, it specifically says to wait until you do your clearance measurements before you replace the O-rings. So there's, there's three of them, and. Uh, just replacing each one. Be careful with those splines and the O rings so you don't damage them. Okay, so now we're going to assemble the main shaft um, in the correct way. Putting the gear on and the 2-4 um, clutch hub. Uh, then we have this little sleeve and then a washer that goes on the sleeve. Now this washer, uh, oh I forgot about the thrust bearing and the other needle bearing. Uh, this washer on top after this gear is directional. You'll see me it has a groove in it. <clears throat> so let's put the gear in first. Make sure it's splined in. And we have another needle bearing. So there's the watch. Yeah, there's a groove on that one side. And then if you flip it over, there's no groove. That groove, it has to go in, in that with the groove facing out or else the little teeny snap ring doesn't have enough room to get into the groove on the shaft. Okay, so um, we are now replacing the two top O-rings on the shaft. And um, <clears throat> this is going to be the, there's four sealing rings or scarf cut seals we're going to replace. Use your pick and get them out. <clears throat> Last one, and um, now Matt has a couple words to say. Okay, I'm just going to interrupt my narration voice for a second. Uh, what you just saw me put on are what's known as scarf cut seals or ceiling rings. And if you see, um, so here's the ceiling ring. And you see how they sort of open up? Now it's extremely important that you put them so they overlap each other the correct way. Um, so this would be the correct way. Just like this, forms a nice circle. Now you could do it backwards like this and you see how that's like not so nice anymore extremely important you have to put them in the right way um, or else they won't seal okay so we're back now <clears throat> putting on this little needle bearing with the snap ring to hold it in place and 
and uh, the book calls to press this fourth gear out, but I just put it between two tables and smacked it with a piece of wood. It's extremely important you don't let it fall into the ground, so I held it, and I also had a, my trash can full of uh, soft rags inside of it, just, just in case I missed it. So just smack it with a piece of wood until it comes out. Okay, now we're gonna disassemble the counter shaft the rest of the way. Taking off all the gears and washers and <coughs> needle bearings and finally the third clutch hub. And uh, so we're going to take the third clutch hub and compress it with this in the same way we did in the previous videos, remove the snap ring, take off tool and look at the Man, these clutches and steels and they are pretty burnt up. Gotta take the piston out of the clutch hub. Um, remove the remove and replace the two O-rings. I just cleaned it up. You want to clean everything. <coughs> there we go. Clean the clutch hub up. And we're going to lubricate it so the piston slides in easier. And we're going to put the piston in just like we did before. Give it a little twist and push at the same time. And push down the edges. And uh, when it's all the way down, make sure it turns freely so you know it's seated well. Okay, so using the gear as sort of a spacer and we're going to compress it in the exact same way we did before. Um, put the snap ring back on and <clears throat> after it's on take remove the tool and then uh, there's a little spacer Make sure it goes in the correct orientation, then we're going to replace the clutches and steels. Then we have the top plate. Snap ring. There we go. We're going to measure the clearance of the clutches in the same exact way we did in the previous video. Pulling up on it, on the caliper, to see how much it moves the shaft up, and then doing that a couple times, taking an average. Uh, now we're going to replace the O-rings on the counter shaft. There are the new ones. Assemble the counter shaft. Put the clutch hub on first, then we have this spline washer. And then a uh, thrust needle bearing. A um, little sleeve, and then another needle bearing to go over the sleeve. And then we have uh, third gear. <clears throat> Excuse me. Another thrust needle bearing. Another gear. And then we have uh, the spacer sleeve. Another needle bearing. And we uh, have the gear and then the spacer hub. Now I'm going to hammer the shaft back on. And I did this for a while, uh, but then I found that it would, it would get it almost all the way. 
and for some reason it wasn't getting it all the way down so I eventually had to take it off between the two tables and just smack from the top the rest of the way down. I just went each side and hit it the exact same amount of times. Here's down evenly. And now I'm going to check the clearance between the sleeve. Make sure it's in the right location. Everything's all good. Just using my feeler gauges to get the clearance between there. Now we're going to take apart the sprag assembly, just rotate it to the left and pull out at the same time. Um, removing the bearing and everything. And now we're going to remove the sprag by prying up on it gently with a flathead screwdriver. Inspect the sprag, clean it out, clean everything. Um, inspect everything and then we're gonna put it back together we just push down on each of the sprags around until you can push the whole thing down this sort of catch the end and uh, just work it until it gets all the way down there we go and then we're gonna put the uh, parking gear on Go. And make sure it turns counterclockwise and locks clockwise when you hold it in that orientation. We'll put the uh, little sleeve with the bearing back in it. Okay, now we're in the twin or the differential housing. In the bottom part of the case, we're gonna um, punch out one of the axle seals. <coughs> it goes into the differential. We're gonna use uh, the new one. Hit the new one in until it's flush, just going around the edges with this little wooden uh, peg here. Going around till it's flush. And now we have the torque converter seal. I just took it out with a seal puller. It worked really well. We have the new one. Put the piece of wood across it so it gets hit down evenly. Now we have this um, other little seal down here. I tried to get it out with the seal puller at first, but it kind of just ripped it apart. Uh, so then ultimately I used my screwdriver and just pried up on the side, and uh, then it came right out. <clears throat> I'm going to put the new one in, and hammer it back down into place. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.